So, uh, this presentation, I'll apologize ahead of time, is a little haphazard. Um, it started out as a, a presentation I prepared on fairly short notice when we needed uh, an RTFM for January's meeting, and then I ended up being sick, so I wasn't able to present on, uh, on this in January. And then I uh, got very busy at work and didn't really have time to look at my notes until just very recently. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to kind of wing it a little bit. Uh, so yeah, I apologize for that. Um, as I was uh, trying to decide what to present on for an RTFM though, I uh, was surprised looking through our past RTFM presentations that we had never done anything on system control. Um, the reason I was surprised by that is I know we've had a lot of roundtable discussions on systemd. Most of it was involving people slagging systemd for various reasons. And um, I'm not here to do that today. Um, not because I disagree with those that slag it. I think all of that is justified. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not going to be a hater who's going to hate, 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 hate tonight. Um, I did want to mention, though, before I get right into the man page, that uh, that despite all the criticisms that System D and uh, System Control get, um, there are a few nice things about it. Um, one thing it has provided is consistency across all Linux distros, or mostly all Linux Linux distros, um, in how system services are managed. Prior to System D, it was kind of you know, it depended on the heritage of your distro as to what commands you use to manage services. Um, also, system control provides a fairly orthogonal command set, more or less give or take, um, for managing all your resources. And um, uh, yeah, it, it provides a unified interface for managing your, all your, your service uh, demons. Um, prior to uh, system control, you probably had more than one command you needed to worry about knowing. Like, you typically had one command, for instance, that you would use for enabling and disabling services at runtime, and um, a separate command for um, enabling and disabling the permanent state of that service at boot time. Um, and with system control, it's all kind of integrated in the one command. So yeah, there are advantages despite um, all the slagging that system D gets. Um, so uh, what are some of the things you can do with it? Um, I'm just going to skip past the options initially to get to some of the subcommands. There we go, commands. So um, essentially, it works on things um, called units. And units can be uh, services, or they can be devices, or they can be a number of other things. Um, I'm really just going to focus on services tonight. Uh, I don't want to get into all of the other bazillion things that System D lets you manage. Um, and uh, yeah, so here are some of the essential commands. Start and stop, um, similar to what you may already be familiar with, with pre-system D type of, of systems. Um, so yeah, the ones that were based on uh, like a system five init, uh, typically you had um, either you would just call the init scripts directly with an argument of start or stop, to start or stop that particular service. Um, in some distributions, there was a service command that essentially did that for you in a little bit more of a user-friendly fashion. So commands like start, stop, uh, restart, reload, um, those basically interact with the runtime state of uh, those services. And so that's what those commands there are all about. Um, oh yeah, this is, this is kind of an unusual one, but potentially useful. Um, this you would, wouldn't tend to use interactively that much, but it's useful in scripts. Uh, the one at the top of the screen is active. 
um, if you want to in a script query to see if a particular service is running before you do something, uh, you can use is active. Um, word of warning, if you use is active in a script, you probably want to use the quiet option. And additional word of warning, even with the quiet option, you may still get some mysterious output at times out of the thing. <laughs> so in addition to using quiet, you may want to redirect your standard error to dev null or to a file or something if you don't want random output coming out of your scripts. Um, status is a way of querying uh, the status of a particular service. And there's lots of other commands that I'm not going to talk about. Um, oh yeah, these ones I did want to talk about. Um, for changing the uh, boot time status of particular services, there's enable and there's disable. Uh, this would be similar to, um, for instance, in Red Hat lineage type of systems, there was uh, Check config, thank you. <laughs> I'm already forgetting the old names. <laughs> uh, yeah, chk config. Um, and you would use options of on or off to enable or disable the uh, boot time status of that particular service. Um, one thing to note about syntax, with the old commands, you typically had the command name and then you would name the service and then you had your subcommand like run or uh, like uh, start stop restart, or in the case of check config, on, off. Those appeared at the end. With system control, um, you have the system control command, you then have the subcommand, which appears once, and then you have a list of names or patterns after. So the, the nice thing about that is in one command, you can start or stop or enable or disable a number of different services all in one command. So that's, that's a useful thing. And in that sense, it's a little more in keeping with traditional Unix command structures. Um, and let's see, is there anything else I wanted to focus on? Oh yeah, mask. Mask and unmask. This is kind of a curious one. Um, I don't think there's any real counterpart to that in the older things, um, but I found this to be useful. Uh, it's a way of disabling a service in a more um, persistent or insistent way. Uh, the thing about just disabling a service uh, is that some other script or something can just go and check to see if this service is enabled or disabled and say, oh, well, I need that service, and it will go and re-enable it for you. Well, with mask, it's a way of kind of faking it out so that it's disabled, but it looks like it is enabled. And it does that essentially by um, uh, faking symlinks. It essentially links it to dev null uh, as opposed to the actual script for that service. And so uh, the neat thing about that is once you've masked that service, um, it's likely to stay that way. It's not likely to be changed by anything else. Um, you might be wondering why would you want to do that and when? Um, typically, it's if you have uh, different named services that accomplish the same function. One might be a legacy version of something. For instance, network manager is kind of the new preferred way of uh, managing your network interfaces. But in some particular cases, you don't want to use network manager. You'd rather use uh, the legacy network service. Um, and so what you would then want to do is enable the network service and disabling network manager, you would think would accomplish what you want. But again, this is one of those cases where something else is going to say, wait a minute, I need network manager and would re-enable it for you. But by masking it, um, nothing else should touch it then. And you can then have your legacy service um, coexisting with the faked out new service. 
likewise, if you're using um, IP tables as your firewall and you want to do it the old fashioned way with um, uh, directly managing your, your list of IP table things as opposed to using a newer uh, firewall like FirewallD, uh, you might want to mask out FirewallD just so that nothing else will enable it and have it conflict with IP tables. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about here is, oh yeah, there's another series of commands. Um, I used to be you did these directly through init by passing it a particular run level argument. So for instance, init zero on most systems would do a power off. It would initiate all the halt operations and then the last step was to run power off. Um, with uh, system control, you have subcommands for halt and power off instead. And so you can explicitly state which of those two actions you want rather than trusting that the, the run level is configured to use the one that you want or trying to remember which run level number you're supposed to use for the particular action you want. Um, and likewise, reboot would correspond to the old init six uh, run level. Okay. Um, so yeah, here's just showing some examples of the commands. Um, the one last thing I wanted to talk about, and this is a beef with some people with system D and system control. I know Trevor, this is one of your beefs. Um, when you're using uh, the status command in particular is where this comes into play. Uh, any sy system control command that outputs more than just a single line of output, uh, like status, uh, typically tries to be terminal aware. And um, they do that by tying into a pager by default. So they're expecting that their output is going to be more than one screenful. So they automatically pipe to a pager, which is uh, selected using some complicated formula, using looking at, you, you, looking at either the pager variable or looking for pr the existence of particular commands. And there's a sequence of commands that they will use. Um, I think they talked about that just a little earlier. Oh yeah. Yeah, and likewise for the editor, for subcommands that invoke an editor, uh, it will basically invoke either the editor defined by one of the variables, editor or visual, or a list of well-known editors in a particular order that's listed there in the man page. And likewise for pagers, it will look at less and more in that order. Um, if you don't want to have the output put through a pager, there is a no pager option uh, that you can use. Um, I also find it just as convenient or more convenient to then just pipe to cat or pipe to less or something myself. Or just scroll up in my terminal. <laughs> How many people are working in a, in a, like in a console and not yeah. in a terminal that yeah. I have a scroll wheel for? Exactly, yeah. But the thing is, it's going to give you that pager behavior on its own unless you disable that. If you want to disable it more permanently, this is the, the nice thing I found in the man page. I didn't know that existed prior to looking at that is there's a environment variable system D underscore pager that you can set. And if you set it to an empty string or to the string cat, it's basically the equivalent of using the no pager argument. Uh, it won't actually force it to pipe through cat. It will just disable the pager functionality. Um, another thing that's nice about that is um, there is an option uh, a sub option on status, for instance, minus L is the short form, or minus minus uh, full, uh, which essentially will inhibit the behavior, the default behavior of system control to try and squish output into the width of uh, what it thinks your terminal's width is. Um, and in some, on some systems, what I've found with system control is 
unless you disable that pager function, even with that full option or the minus L option, it still does the squishing. Um, and so you really want to disable the pager in that case. Um, oh yeah, another option I wanted to talk about is when you're using the enable, disable, or mask commands, there's an option minus minus now that in addition to um, enabling or disabling or masking the boot time state, you can have it start or stop the service immediately. And so again, your typical sequence is to do both, like enable the service for, for boot time and to start the service running immediately. So this is a shorthand way of doing those two operations in one go. Or the counterpart is if you're trying to disable those services. Um, yeah, so I can go through and show you some examples of the commands, but I think what I've shown is fairly self-explanatory. Um, so I think I'll just stop here and just ask if there are any questions. Yeah. Um, can you sort of relate, how does this relate to Macintosh and their launch control? I have trouble using that. Um... Um, I'm not that familiar with the Macintosh environment. I, I would think this. like functionally it's control. sort of the equivalent thing, but, but I'm sure syntax and all of the back end scripts and all that would be very different. Actually, the CLI syntax for System CTL is very, very similar to Launch CTL. Oh, okay. Um, and that's deliberate. Uh, Buttering uh, some of his earlier interviews and speaking uh, in earlier talks, he refers very specifically to the fact that he based most of his design on LaunchD. Okay. Uh, so it's quite nice. similar. Okay. Conceptual, like this, there's, there's yeah. variations in the details of the mm -hmm. commands, yeah. but anything you read about you know, what system D does and how it works is probably 80% applicable to launch D, mm -hmm. maybe 75%, I don't know, but it's substantial. Okay. The main difference, of course, is that launch D gets to use mock sockets and mock message passing, mm -hmm. which system D completely lacks. Yeah. Um, and got for it through, so. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention in my preamble that I, I had wanted to, to mention is that, of course, uh, System D and System Control are Linux specific, so you're not going to find it on anything but Linux. Um, and you will find it on most modern Linux distributions, unless it's one of the really kind of bare bones, minimal uh, Linux uh, or Dev distributions. One. Or Dev1. Yeah, one. Yeah, one. Yeah, that's the Debian fork that uses oh. specifically uses uh, Sysv. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. The protest distributions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you say everybody, you need the big screen, the world, the Red Hat world, the Debian, the mainstream Debian, the two yeah. world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which also means Arch. Have you run into any cases? encounter so far where you wanted or had to pass arguments to your scripts or to like your the certain uh, services. The only reason I ask is this is something I've read right into before and I feel like it's getting more common. So like there'll be a VPN service or something like Tink and they'll want to start or stop a specific network in Tink if it's happening multiples or oh, okay. DHCP yeah I, I didn't want to get into the okay. multiple instance stuff because that's a little gotcha. Beyond, but yeah, that, that is one of the, the features of uh, system control that is fairly nice. But um, yeah, I, I did. I thought it was a little beyond what I wanted to cover today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The answer is you don't pass arguments; you have multiple instances instead. Yeah, yeah, that's essentially it. Including dynamically creating and destroying those instances as needed to simulate what you would do with just passing a freaking argument in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it can lead to some convoluted cases, but I think part of the, the philosophy behind it is they wanted to have a consistent command set as opposed to the old um, uh, System 5 init scripts where 
every writer of a script chose which commands, some commands they wanted to implement, and sometimes they made up their own. You know? <laughs> so, so at least this way you get orthogonality and consistency uh, across all your, your services. That's the upside. The downside is you lose some flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? Uh, you mentioned Yes. One of the things I notice with system control, uh, I'm not really a touch typist. And so I discovered that typing SYS, TEM, CTL, yes. space, XXX, X, space, whatever, uh, especially when you're trying out a lot of services, was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I wrote a little batch file, uh, well, script file and batch, about 50 lines worth, that takes the most common uh, commands and simply abbreviates them down to three letters. Um, SC is, well, it just says the control itself, SCS to start, SCR to restart, SCK to kill something, SCQ to query its status, um, SCJ to run journal control, etc. Mm -hmm. And as part of this batch file, if you run it with a, with a dash dash setup, it'll set up all the symlinks for you in user local bin. And uh, quite frankly, that has been a real lifesaver for me. <laughs> it's really nice just to be able to type SCL space and uh, your service name to reload a service, yeah. or SCR to shut down and restart the service. Go ahead. You want to post that to roundtable? What's that? You want to post it to roundtable for anybody who's thinking, yeah, I hate typing systems. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the roundtable uh, mailing list. Mailing list. Yeah, okay. roundtable at mug.ca. It's literally round table. At One word. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mug. Well, well, I always get yeah. that wrong. Hang on. Well, I make a note on this because round table at uh, that's mug.ca, right? Yep. So the, 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 next, the next step is where you make it, so you just press the letter S in the right rhythm and it gives you the command. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the reload command, SCL, actually does have a conflict with another package. I, oh, I yes. forget which package it is, though. And uh, um, yeah. to a degree, I've managed to get around Software that. Software collection simply library. Simply removing that package, <laughs> because I don't, yeah. I don't need it. Mm -hmm. So are, are you making links, or are you making any uh, siblings. Uh, that way I don't have to put the aliases into the RC scripts. And it's, uh, it's just, now the downside is I put the aliases into user local bin, which by default usually isn't accessed, set up when you go root, uh, but I get around that by having root talk to user local bin as well, add it to its path. Mm -hmm. But there's not, it says you can't put uh, your SC script into user bin. Now, how many people always type sysctl instead of systemctl? Mm, more than once. <laughs> I don't think that's happened for me. Actually, what I found yeah. myself doing was the opposite. I was meaning to write yeah. sysctl, yeah. and uh, instead my fingers are going sysctl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess the other thing here is it's, it's a hard one to get autocomplete on. Like you got to get a lot of yeah. 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 System C. <laughs> Thanks for that. All right. Like Thank you. Like users or yeah. Thanks for that.